Hi there. Um, we continue uh, with the uh, next TCA cycle video, how the two carbons that came in from uh, acetyl CoA and pyruvate hydrogenase, how they will come out. So the first uh, enzyme we're gonna see uh, is isocitrate dehydrogenase, uh, takes isocitrate and uh, takes out one carbon, okay, to make alpha ketoglutarate. In, so this is the carbon that is living, the, in, let's say in the middle of isocitrate. And in the process, um, the hydroxy carbon on isocitrate will be uh, converted to, uh, to a keto carbon, to a carbonyl carbon. So we have a redox reaction and the electrons will find their way onto NAD plus to become NADH in many organisms. Uh, it doesn't have to be NAD, it could be NADP as it is in humans and, and the product will be NADPH. Uh, in fact, it's a major source of NADPH in, uh, in humans, as it turns out. What is it? It's, an, it's a redox uh, reaction. And how does it happen? Well, uh, we have seen this before. In every decarboxylation, whenever a, a carboxyl group leaves, it will leave behind um, a carbanion, okay? And that carbanion has to be uh, stabilized. And we've seen already, um, uh, some ways uh, that this carbonyl can be stabilized, for example, with TPP in pyruvate hydrogenase uh, and in pyruvate carboxylase and during ethanol uh, fermentation, alcoholic fermentation. Uh, here it's a little different. So uh, we have to, um, uh, we'll see a different strategy. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the way to stabilize it will be to have a, a, a keto group, a carbonyl right next to the, to the one that's gonna leave. Um, and, but we don't have it on isocitrate. So instead we have a hydroxy group. So this hydroxy group is not a good sink, okay? And uh, to make it a good sink, uh, we first have to, uh, uh, to make it a carbonyl group and then we can decarboxylate, okay? So we're gonna put right next to the CO2 that's gonna leave, we're gonna put a carbonyl group. How does that happen? It's a very straightforward, uh, again, um, uh, hydride transfer uh, reaction. So this hydroxy group will become a carbonyl, so it will leave, the proton will, will, will leave, will make the double bond here between oxygen and carbon, and this bond, uh, the two electrons plus the proton will uh, move on to NAD or, an, or to NAD plus or NADP plus to reduce uh, uh, and, and, and to reduce this cofactor and become, you know, NADH or NDPH. And now what we have behind is, uh, is this uh, carbonyl group. So then, okay, the CO2 can leave. So this carboxyl group now can, can leave and this extra uh, electrons that will come on, that's the carbonyl, okay, uh, can bounce onto oxygen. Okay, and this option was not available when it was just a uh, um, hydroxy group. So CO2 leaves, and of course it can bounce back out and pick up a proton, and now we have our product, okay, alpha ketoglutarate. Is the oxidation of, so we talked about the redox reaction, is it favorable? If we go back onto our scheme, we're using NADP, so we have a reduction, okay, the NADP or NAD plus becoming NADH or NADPH, and look what it is, overall is somewhere here. Okay, on average, on average it's gonna be at minus 320, so it will be somewhere there. Um, and we're gonna couple this reaction with this one in reverse. Now this one, for the most part, uh, the E value is above, it's more positive than the E value for the NAD reaction, reduction. So in most reactions, uh, this will not be favorable. However, notice an overlap here, right? So this is a broad uh, range here of what carbonyl um, uh, reductions uh, look like in real life, depending on the surrounding uh, environment, uh, proteins and the R and the R plus here. So in fact, for um, alpha ketoglutarate uh, to become, in, in, in the reaction, the IDH reaction we're talking about, the E value is actually minus 0.38, so it's actually more negative uh, 
uh, than uh, the what we want, the reduction, which is an ND plus 28, so that's minus 320. So the, yes, it is favorable because the delta A will be minus uh, 0.32, uh, minus minus 0.38, so that will be a net positive of 60. Just to clarify what I'm talking about, um, in this scheme, you know, the reads tend to get richer, so the reduction has to be above the oxidation of, the, of what you, whatever half cells you want to couple. So really, we have to put the, the IDH reaction somewhere here at a very low uh, end of uh, very most negative end, let's say, of the range of the carbonyl to hydroxy carbon uh, half cells. And that makes it uh, thermodynamically favorable. So yes, it, it does happen. Why does it happen? Uh, for the exact two reasons that the whole TCA cycle exists to provide uh, electrons um, you know, uh, in the form of an EDH and of course uh, uh, building blocks. And it turns out that alpha ketoglutarate or 2-ketoglutarate is, is a major, major building block, very unusual one, five carbons. It's actually the only five carbon unit in the whole thing here. Uh, we've never seen a five carbon unit before. Okay, so this is what it is and it's, it's used uh, very heavily to make um, uh, amino acids uh, and also in the generation of, of nucleotides, especially the purine uh, base on nucleotides. All right, so this is where we are in the cycle in terms of the redox uh, um, uh, color coding of all the carbons. So we, we, we lost uh, a CO2, there it is, this one uh, left. The two, and also the, uh, this carbon, the hydroxy carbon, got oxidized to, to, to a carbonyl carbon and the two electrons found their way onto an ATH. Five carbon compound. Now it turns out um, that this reaction we're talking about, IDH1 uh, and the mitochondrial version uh, is IDH2, uh, is probably the hottest you know, metabolic uh, reaction uh, with regards to cancer. Uh, when the human genome, when uh, you know all our taxes uh, were taken into account and, and the genome was completed and people will start sequencing various cancer genomes and trying to find mutations associated with cancer, um, the, uh, there was a huge uh, uptick in mutations of IDH1 and IDH2, uh, implicating particular cancers uh, of the brain, such as glioblastomas, very aggressive uh, forms of cancer, brain cancer. And the mutations they found, they, get, they, they had, there were specific mutations that were associated with, uh, with cancer uh, formation. So they're actually, this is a driver mutation in, in cancer. It's not just something that uh, happens um, in the background of other cancer mutations. They, keep, they get going and then just to, you know, to, to help um, the landscape, let's say, of uh, those happen on top of that. These are actually primary uh, driver mutations. They're in the active site where isocitrate, where the substrate uh, binds uh, in, in, in the enzyme. And um, you, know, you, can, you can see them right there, uh, arginine 132, arginine 172. And the question is, what were they doing? And, and I should say, in terms of oncometabolites, metabolites that are associated with cancer, um, these, uh, these compounds that I'm about to talk about are by far uh, the most uh, um, sought after in, in, in various clinical uh, labs these days and research labs. So this is a canonical reaction, okay? If you take that purified enzyme, the normal enzyme, the you know, non wild type enzyme, not mutated, it will do exactly what we described. It will take isocitrate, and we're talking about the human enzyme, um, and convert to alpha ketoglutarate, oxidize uh, the carbon from hydroxy to, to, to carbonyl carbon, um, that would be this one, and generate an ADPH, all right? It turns out if you do the same reaction with a mutant, okay, you purify the mutant enzyme, and what happens is actually uses alpha ketoglutarate as a substrate. Remember, the enzyme can bind both uh, the, the, the reactant and the product. In this case, um, the product is actually the reactant, okay, with a mutant uh, cancer-associated oncogenic mutation, okay? that enzyme will take alpha ketoglutarate as a reactant and produce 2-hydroxyglutarate. In addition, it will actually, this will be an oxidation. It will just take this carbonyl group and, um, and 
So if there is no CO2, there is no decarboxylation here, okay? There's no CO2 that is forming. It's a five carbon unit to another five carbon unit, and the only difference is the oxidation, is the reduction of this carbonyl group back to a hydroxy carbon. So in the redox uh, scheme, it actually does the opposite, the, the reverse of what the wild type enzyme does. The mutant enzyme uh, will uh, work uh, to reduce this carbonyl carbon on alpha ketobutyrate. All right, so that's what this indicates. Now, is this favorable? So what are we coupling here? The half reactions are shown here, okay. Uh, we have uh, NAD or NADP, doesn't matter. Um, uh, we know the half cell of that. And alpha ketoglutarate now will be converted to the two hydroxyglutarate. That's the reduction. So we wanna couple that, which has an E value of uh, almost zero, to, um, um, this one, but in reverse, okay, so NADH or NADPH will be, will be uh, oxidized to NAD+. Plus. Okay, that's a minus 320. So zero minus minus 320, you get a super high, you know, plus 0.3 volts. Uh, so it's extremely favorable, actually. All right, so the reaction is favorable, no question about it. The mutation that we, the mutant uh, enzyme uh, binds alpha-ketoglutarate as a substrate and converts it to two hydroxyglutarate to two hydroxyglutarate. And in this uh, mutant settings in cancers, this metabolite accumulates, which does not happen. This does not happen in the, in, the, in the normal tissue. It happens only in the, to a great extent, in the, in, the, in the cancer tissue, all right? So how does it cause cancer though? I mean, that doesn't answer this question. So what is so special about two hydroxyglutarate? So which is made from alpha ketoglutarate um, the way it causes cancer is actually um, to, by changing gene expression. Um, that is what this uh, uh, scheme shows. It changes the methylation status of, uh, of uh, uh, histones onto proteins. And that in turn affects a variety of genes, okay? changes their expression. And it is those expression, uh, these changes in gene expression that cause cancer. It turns out, so that it's not the only one. So let's say in mitochondria where the TCA cycle is happening, some of the same reaction will happen with the mitochondrial versions of the enzyme, um, will generate 2-hydroxyglutarate and other similar uh, compounds such as succinate and fumarate, which we're gonna see next you know, in the TCA cycle. What they do, they go and inhibit this class of enzyme, which are called, enzyme, which are called alpha-ketoglutarate dependent dioxygenases. So what they do is uh, they take alpha ketoglutarate, there's a different set of enzymes here, okay, and they change, here, they, here it is, they change the methyl group on lysines, on histones, or cytosines, on DNA, they change it okay, to, to a hydroxycarbon. And it is this change um, that is important to maintain, you know, proper gene expression, but when it doesn't happen, then you have changes in gene expression. So these metabolites plus the normal succinate and fumarate that is generated in the TCA cycle is important to maintain, uh, uh, is, is a, plays a role in gene expression indirectly. This is a completely different things that we're, we're talking about, nothing to do with the TCA cycle. It goes in the nucleus, these metabolites, uh, they block uh, this uh, dioxygenase and change okay, the expression pattern um, in the nucleus. So people who discovered this, we've seen already some of these names here. Um, Craig Thompson and Luke Handley, they, they of, and others in TACMAC, they, they formed a company several years ago uh, to, to monitor um, both as a marker, as a, as a cancer marker, the appearance of, uh, of uh, you know, 2-hydroxyglutarate, and also find ways to block these effects, find drugs, basically therapeutics, to block these effects on gene expression. Right? And they formed this company, Agios, um, has raised enormous hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. This is, a, as I said, extremely, this is an extremely um, active area of metabolic control of uh, tumor uh, formation. And uh, Craig Thompson, the, the founder, left, uh, you know, Penn, he was at Penn at the time, went to Sloan Kettering. And now we have institutions suing each other uh, uh, in terms of uh, who gets to have uh, the intellectual property on, on all these therapeutics that uh, uh, 
uh, will be coming up. So already it's, it's it's, it has revolutionized our understanding um, about the significance of met the metabolic control of cell division. As I said, these are driver mutations uh, in the metabolic enzyme, which was uh, unheard of uh, until these cases uh, that have been discovered. And again, that's a result, a direct result, uh, a success story, if you will, of the human genome project. Um, it, it's very important, you know, the alpha ketoglutarate levels, in addition to all these biosynthetic, uh, uh, so an, another point here is in addition to all these biosynthetic roles of alpha ketoglutarate as a building block for um, uh, biosynthesis, it, here you, we can add another function of alpha ketoglutarate to maintain the, the stem cellness, uh, the stemness of various cells um, to maintain our stem cell populations. And any perturbations in the levels of alpha ketoglutarate obviously have uh, issues with that too. Uh, we we now we know so much more compared to you know even five years ago. So this is a paper in 2016, actually so linked. You know, a change. I said changes in gene expression. You know, you get glioma if you have this IDH1 mutations. Well, what changes are those? Can we pinpoint specific genes that are uh, driving now tumor formation? And and the answer is yes. Okay, so you lose this uh, um, gene expression uh, signature that you normally have to block expression of the of PDGF. That's a, a known non-con gene, uh, known for, for decades. But in this situation, uh, so that's in normal cells, uh, you don't express um, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this non-con gene. But in IDH1 uh, uh, mutants, in gliomas, you change the methylation pattern just before upstream you know, uh, of, of this uh, oncogene, and now you express it, and that leads to cancer. So we can trace essentially the sequence of events up from the, you know, the mutation of IDH all the way down to downstream effects, specific effects that cause cancer, which is not a, triv a trivial situation. All right, so we took one back to our more mundane uh, topics in the TCA cycle. Uh, we took one carbon out, okay? We put two in, we took one out. A very important reaction in the previous one with uh, uh, isocitrate dehydrogenase. So now back to the normal situation, we have alpha ketoglutarate. We're gonna lose one more, okay? And we're gonna have succinyl CoA. Now, if you look at this <laughs> in a little uh, carefully, if you imagine that in, instead of this part here, okay? Uh, you just have another proton, so that will be a methyl group attached to this compound. That will be pyruvate, all right? Methyl group, carbonyl, and carboxyl group, that will be pyruvate. Here we have a few extra things. And if you see a reaction where you have pyruvate plus coenzyme A plus NAD, and you get, you know, CO2 and something attached to CoA, you know, that's pyruvate dehydrogenase all, all over again, all right? So this is where we got acetyl-CoA, that's the acetyl group up here, okay? CO2 plus the, the methyl group, that will be acetyl, so all this, plus CO2 and electrons on NADH, right? We just start with something bigger. We don't start with pyruvate, we start with alpha-ketoglutarate. That's the difference, right? Between this reaction, the alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase and pyruvate dehydrogenase. And it is a redox reaction, and it works in exactly the same way. In fact, it uses the same E3. Remember, this is a giant uh, enzyme, pyruvate dehydrogenase, that has E1, E2, E3. So alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase also has an E1, E2, and E3. In fact, the E3 is exactly the same. The E1 and E2 are very similar, okay, but not the same. They cannot, uh, uh, you cannot substitute one for the other for the two different reactions. So for pyruvate dehydrogenase, you have to, have to use the pyruvate dehydrogenase in one and in E2. For alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, you use the alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, E1 and 2 And the answer is obvious why that is, because this is bigger, so the active site where the, this has to bind has to be bigger, okay, than the pyruvate binding site. But the actual mechanism is, is the same. So this is another illustration of uh, life, you know, hitting on something good, a nice module to do this chemistry, and and then if something if it needs to do the exact same chemistry again, but but with slight differences to accommodate different substrates, all it has to do is just tweak a little bit the active site, and and everything works. Now why is E three the same? However, well if you if you go back to pyruvate dehydrogenase, 
you know, what was the purpose of E3? The purpose of E3 was simply to reoxidize lipoic acid, right? Uh, so it doesn't see these substrates or anything. It just you know, returns um, the lipoic acid, lipoic acid to its oxidized form, which is the form that can work uh, uh, with the actual chemistry. So it doesn't need to be different. It, it can be the same. Okay, it doesn't see this uh, bigger substrate. So. That's a theme we're gonna see over and over again. When the chemistry is exactly the same, but you know the compounds that are involved are a little different, are bigger or smaller, uh, all the cell has to do is just to, just to tweak it. So you tweak a successful uh, strategy and you don't reinvent it from scratch, usually. All right, um, is it a favorable reaction? What do we do? We couple the reduction of NAD to NADH. That's, we know the value by now, it's minus uh, 0.32 volts and we have uh, this oxidation of alpha ketoglutarate to succinate, which is uh, an extremely negative, uh, minus 0.67 um, volts. So of course, it's extremely favorable. So uh, almost you know, uh, 350 plus 350 uh, millivolts. So why, why do we do that? Um, uh, for the same reasons again. So we have uh, electrons in the form of NAD8s came off. And succinyl CoA, which is an activated now, it's a thioester, it's an activated four carbon unit, is also a key building block, building block for uh, porphyrins. If you ask what, what do porphyrins do, you know, all your heme um, uh, that you know, carries oxygen, uh, it's based on a porphyrin uh, ring. Uh, how are we in the scheme? The two carbons are gone, but notice again that the two carbons that came in, which are highlighted in the gray here, uh, are still there. So in the first cycle, of the in the first turn of the TCA cycle, the two carbons that came in do not come out. They are different carbons that were on oxaloacetate. Um, we lost, uh, uh, here is the one that lost, we got the electrons, and the star here indicates that this is an activated four carbon unit because it's a thioester with a, with a coenzyme A. And this video will uh, will finish here, and we'll continue with the next one. That uh, we'll see how uh, we can go from now. The task is to go from this four carbon unit back all the way to oxaloacetate, and keep doing this with new carbon that comes in. So at this point, we'll stop.